So we're going to get this going today. So let's get ready for what's good. What's good? What's good? What's new? What's good? What's new? What's good? What's, what's, good? what's, what's, good? what's, what's new? new? When you're bored at the house and tired of trying to make a dollar, gather some friends and in the end make a winner. What's new? What's good? What's new? What's good? What's new? What's good? What's new? What's new? Yo, 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 Mikey, what's good? Well, good evening, Isaiah, and good evening to the rest of my other male co-hosts. I was thinking, what did y'all want to be when, when you were growing up? Because when I was growing up, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a chef. And I was the pickiest eater in the world. All I ate was pizza, PB&Js, french fries, and I didn't eat fully chicken tenders. I used to eat around them, the breading. And so my parents were like, you can't be a chef. You don't even like food. And I also wanted to be an astronaut too, because space is really cool. And I did love space for a while. And then growing up into high school, I did want to be an astrophysicist. And I, I did like, I love science, but going into college, I went everywhere as a chemistry major. And then I took the math placement test and I realized we are not doing that because I'm not that good at math. <laughs> but yeah, so now I'm just doing music and uh, podcasts and, and this, and I enjoy it, being an entertainer of sorts. Entertainer. Mm -hmm. How about all y'all? So when I was a kid, I was one of those kids who always copied what everybody else wanted to do. So like, Mike, I remember there was this one instance where um, I was in the car with, with my cousins or something, and one of them was like, I want to be a basketball player. And I was like, I also want to be a basketball player. <laughs> And it, it went on like that for a while. I really didn't, I never really, I wasn't really like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I kind of was just like, oh, that sounds cool. I, if, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, but I think later on in life, I was like, especially like in middle school into early high school, I was like, I want to be, I wanted to be a lawyer, uh, specifically a defense attorney. But that really didn't happen, as you guys know. Um, and it, that wasn't really in the cards for me. Um, eventually, I decided that, you know, I wanted to be an actor. And that happened. So here we are. So for me, <clears throat> back when, like, I can pinpoint the age. When I was four, literally four, or, okay, maybe I, or maybe a little younger. Anyway, for, I want, I was like, I want to be a firefighter. Like, that was my thing, yeah? But um, that changed a little bit because similar to Harrison, I wanted to be a lawyer, you know, do something of that nature. And that actually was almost the stick, the, the stick, as I should say. That That's almost what I did. Um when I was accepted to Longwood, I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And then, you know, my parents helped me have a change of heart. And then I've changed. But I was going to be a lawyer. Um, and throughout college, I, I actually went back to wanting to be a firefighter. Me and one of my good friends from my brothers from high school, we both were like, we're going to be firefighters. And this is, what's, this is it. And I was in like a I forgot the station that I was in, but like I went, I was going through the process. <laughs> fun fact about me, that was actually going to happen. But yeah. Firefighter G. I can see it. You can see it? Yeah, you, no, I actually, I actually could. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't like, a, oh, I'm his friend, so I'll tell him he could do anything he wants. No, I think you actually could be a firefighter if you wanted to. I, um, I mean, I've been, I've wanted to be a lot of things the, for the, the earliest I can remember is probably like elementary school, middle school. I was like, I'm going to be a veterinarian, um, which was really out of the blue. And I don't know why I, th I liked animals a lot when I was younger. So that was why, 
and then through high school well so then you start like everyone's like oh what do you want to be when you grow up and the everyone always says oh the president <laughs> i was like so i similar to harrison's situation i was like oh I'll, yeah i'll say that too i'll be the president but then i was like oh no i actually want to do like politics and stuff like that and that was it for a long time probably until college and then i had a little lawyer stint and i like sat in with my dad and a lot of people um in williamsburg so he let me i got to sit uh with it at a bench with some sitting judges and work with some lawyers for a summer and i really explored that and i love it and i love law and that sort of thing but i didn't want to study it at longwood necessarily nothing against law you know love longwood but it's a very particular uh, ideology i think for law there so i didn't want to do that so then I wanted to be an actor and then uh, I wanted to do something with acting on the side. And then I decided that entertainment was kind of where I wanted to be uh, either amusement parks or uh, television shows or that kind of thing, something in that realm until I do want to still get into politics eventually, probably in my thirties or forties after doing something else. Um, so that's sort of where I'm at now. I love that. And like, I know you know how people have like their secretary of state and whatnot. I'm gonna be Jack's um like personal assistant. I'm gonna be singing everything for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've already determined every national after I'm the president, every national anthem G is gonna sing <laughs> <laughs> until I'm out of office. And it's gonna be it's gonna be different every time, every type of genre that you can think of. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna do it and it's gonna be fine. And then also I'll do a little acting too as he's giving his speech. I'm gonna pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> Interpret his speech dance. Yeah. In my, in my State of the Union addresses, he's gonna be like modern dancing throughout the aisles of the Senate. <laughs> 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 All right. Isaiah. Be like a painted, like a painted thing where he paints the dog. <laughs> I could do that too. Yeah, I sure could. <laughs> hey, but I was gonna say, I know for me, um, I was I think I was like four or five when I first thought about this, but for me, you know, I was trying to be an international pimp, you know, P-I-M-P. But uh, no, 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 but uh, those ideas changed up real quick. You know, my parents were like, no, Isaiah, you can't be a pimp. So then I was like, you know, I'll be a soccer player or a football player. And then for the longest time, I did want to become a cop. Um, happy I didn't do that. No, no, no I wasn't going to become a cop. But uh. You know, and after that, once I got to college, I was like, all right, I'm going to do computer science. And then I went to become a teacher. So I did that for a little bit. And then I switched it up to PR because I was like, hey, I need to graduate, get out of here. And now, um, I don't know, I, I do want to go back to school eventually, become a teacher. I think that's the one thing. Do that, do some coaching on the side in the high school. But that's for me. I, just want, I definitely want to become a teacher eventually. What would you want to teach? Uh, honestly, like, physical education <laughs> is like that I mean for me it's like I don't know growing up in high school I really well high school is school I really have like that good male role model so that's the thing and I think I think with PE I mean one I love sports I love physical activity things like that so these are kids most of the time who want to be there well actually you no know they probably don't want to be there but you know it's gonna be the fun class I'll be the fun teacher I could be that good role model so Oh, Isaiah. Shout out to anyone who wants to be a PE teacher. Like, that's mad props to you, you know? Yeah, you know, me with my big heart. <laughs> it completely changes the subject a little bit. Uh, first of all, obviously, as you can see, I'm a white person. But I know it's so surprising, right? But I think as a white person, it's really important to address this. And that is the overall topic of privilege, whether it be white privilege or male privilege or financial privilege, anything like that. I think it's important that, you know, we as a community all come together and, you know, accept the fact that it's a real thing and it affects people and people, people like me benefit from privilege and that hurts other people in our society. So, you know, where where does that come in with you guys? How does it affect you? What do you think of it? it? Do you think it's a real thing? Do you not? You know, what do you think? I would say, I mean, that's a great topic. Um, 
I know for me, uh, for a long time, I didn't see it as a kid. I mean, just because you're a kid, you don't really pick up those things. But the older or older I got, um, I saw it happen more and more. Uh, there's times where, you know, you hear things happen, but you don't believe it. You know, it's like, it's not going to happen to me. But I remember the first time for me, I was 17. And I was at 7 11. And it was just like, people walking around stuff like that but i was the one who was getting followed by the employees it's one of those things where that alone i was like i don't have this privilege of being able to you know just be myself sometimes you know just because the pigmentation of my skin you know i can't just do certain things or even get pulled over by the cops and things like that like i've had a situation where someone it sucks but i mean i had a situation where the cop had his gun point at me he was like pitch hands up because my friend which is going in my bag to get my wallet, which I get, you know, it is a little unsafe, but it's like, dude, we're on military base, like calm down. But yeah, those are those privileges that I wish I had sometimes, but it's life. Yeah. Agreeing with you, Isaiah, like I'm, I'm a mutt of sorts. I'm Peruvian, Italian, Chinese, and white. And so like growing up, you know, I, I mean, even to this day, I don't know how much I see it in myself because I don't know any other one else's perspective. Like, I'm pretty fair. I'm, I'm fair skin. I'm, I'm, I look whitish, but also people think I look Spanish. And, you know, some people see me differently. Growing up, I just didn't know. Like, you know, you said you were kids. I didn't even realize my mom was like a Latina woman. Like, I just saw her as a white person because she has fair skin too. But she's, her parents are straight from Peru, both of them how it's affected me like i said i don't really know how it's affected me growing up like or at all like people's out the outcomes of things that happen like my police encounters or anything in the court of law i don't know i really don't know and i that's not a strong point for anything but i just don't know how it's affected me it's still a fair point though because i mean some people it, it's a, it's something that for as far as i can tell it's different for everybody but it still happens. Yeah. Yeah, I will say uh, um, it's been made very clear to me throughout. So I was a sociology minor uh, at, at college at Longwood, and it was made very clear to me in the first class that uh, I'm sort of the trifecta of privilege. I'm a, I'm a straight white male, right? It's, uh, and I walked into my, it was like an intro to sociology classes and the first class you take as a sociology minor. And I was the only, I, I was the only one of that, uh, you know, makeup. And uh, they had you do that test where um, like everyone goes outside and stands in a line and you like, take a step forward if it applies to you, take a step backward if it doesn't. I think a lot, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, I think. And it ended and I was, maybe 12 steps ahead of the next person in line. And there was a white female was next. And it was, re it's a very humbling thing <laughs> because you hear it and you see it and there's, and people are fighting for equality and, and all these things, but you put yourself in front of a group of 28 other students at a college that you're all going to, you're all in the same situation essentially. And you turn around and it's like, you don't even realize it unless you choose to realize it, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So after, really, it took college and it took that sort of opening of my eyes. But, oh, my God. I, then you, because then once you have a moment like that, you can think back to the rest of your life and say, oh, my God. I mean, I've been pulled over and they're like, okay, you're fine. Just go home. And you, you start to think about those other things It's like, it, that, that until you have this sort of awakening, it's like, oh, I I never would have realized because you just, you're just living. And Mikey, I understand what you're saying. Like, be, unless you have an incident, it's like, it, I don't have an incident. So how would I know? But until you realize it, I think it's hard. And that's why there's so much tension, I think, with this whole situation is because some people just don't understand it or are choosing not to understand it because they haven't had a situation where they've had to. So it's a really interesting thing to talk about, I think. Yeah. yeah and I will, I like to say this for um, my perspective. Growing up, I really didn't, hmm, I guess we didn't really dwell on it as much. Like, yeah, it's a little different, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Um, well, is it really okay? But um, 
I've had some instances really young with just not having the privilege to just be able to walk and be in a group of people, you know? I was really young and <laughs> for one, let me tell you where I grew up in. I grew up in Doswell, Virginia, and um, even smaller. Uh, oh, well, I went to Beaver Dam Elementary School. And that tells you anything about the place that I'm so proud of. <laughs> but uh, I went to Beaver Dam Elementary School, and every 4th of July, they had this parade, right? And we went out there for this parade one year, and um, my, my, me, my, my, my dad, my mom, and I'm the darkest out of everybody in my freaking family. Let me just say that. Um, but that has nothing to do with it, just all I should say. And my aunt and my other um, a, a little cousin. We went there and unbeknownst to us, um, there's a bank that's like down the road from the school where all the black people go to, to look at the, um, to look at the parade. But we didn't know all that. Like we we're kind of new to the area or new to this parade scene. So we went down there and we sat like in front of the school and like there was nobody around that looked like us, but people just literally got quiet and just looked like, I will never forget this. They just looked at us and some people like took their thing, like got their things and moved, walked away from our, from our group. And like being young, like you don't really know, it's like, oh, what is, what's going on, you know? But it's just like looking back on it, like they moved, they were getting up because they felt uncomfortable with being by people that didn't look like them. Because you're not supposed to be sitting over here. You're supposed to be down the road at SunTrust Bank, not on Beaver Dam's property. And like, because it was so new and so different, like we were even our picture was taken, well, not my picture, but a picture of my dad and my little cousin on his shoulders at that time was taken and it was put on like the front page of the newspaper, like Beaver Dam Parade. And then it was done because that was something uncommon that you saw at in, right in front of that school. So I guess my point of what I'm trying to say is it's little things like that, just being able to exist around the majority is the kind of privilege that sometimes we take for granted. Um, I've been blessed to be able to be around people of all shades and all races and all um, sexual orientations and feel comfortable. But you have some moments like that that just suck, you know, or being pulled over by a police and like, praying to God, like, Lord, please let this be a sensible cop. And then you think, what did I do? What did I just do? What, what was I speeding? Was I only speeding? What I got in my car? Oh, I'm not that kind of person. I don't got nothing in my car. It's like, you just start thinking <laughs> about everything. And sorry, not to make it so down, but it's just like, when we talk about privilege and people not truly seeing the privilege that they may have sometimes, it's just I don't know. Try to, I don't know what I'm trying to say anymore. But that's just something it's hard, I go through. Yeah, it, it's hard, and I hate having this conversation because I don't want to make it look like listen to my story. You're not listening because I've been blessed to have friends like you all that understand and hear me. You know what I mean? I don't ever have to really bring it up. Yeah. It, but has and especially in the theater world, it's definitely obvious where the privilege lies. All right. And I, my whole senior thesis, it was called Unifying African-Americans in Theater because um, there have been roles that have been privileged for certain people, like the Wizard of Oz. Nowhere in that script does it say specifically that Dorothy is white. But that's just what we're used to, so that's what we're going to keep casting. And it took until um, famous Broadway people made The Wiz and just made it all black because it's like, you know what, you're not gonna cast it, so this is all black for all black people. But it's until it's for all black people, it becomes a problem. It's just like, well, we can't even be in that show because you weren't putting us in that show. Like you weren't giving us the opportunity. Um, but that's theater, I can get um, heated about theater, sorry. <laughs> but it's just like little things like that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's fascinating that you say that you don't, you wish we didn't have these conversations. 
and it sucks that we have to have them, but it, it's fascinating to me that people, there are so many people who, cho- like you said, Jack, choose not, they choose not to see it because it doesn't happen to them. Mm-hmm. So it, it's really fascinating to me how like a simple moment to just sit and reflect and to think back to yourself, oh, well, you know, like you were talking about being pulled over by a cop and you both were. And then, you know, I, you know, when I sit in, in my car, all I think is, oh man, what is, what's my dad going to say? How much money? <laughs> yeah. I'm never thinking, is my life going to end today? And, you know, that, that, that's the point where I start to like, even like w- when I was younger, my, my views were, were kind of different because I grew up in an all white um, community for the most part. And, um, you know, it, it really just takes that sitting down and really thinking to yourself about it. And it, it for me, it, it took no time to, to just get into this mindset. Yeah. Yeah I, was, yeah, I just want to say one more thing. And for the people who, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion, if you don't believe it, I get it. But just give someone the chance to talk to, talk to you about it, you know, just hear mm-hmm. them out on their experiences. That's all I ask. Because then maybe that might change it. If not, so be it, you know happens but just listen that's it all right guys so we will be right back after this short commercial break okay. yeah, I, I feel like i feel like we have to have an understanding and you know it's one thing for like for like black people and people of color to tell us things but we have to receive that information yeah. and we don't always get to bring up so i love that What is art? Philosophers, musicians, scientists, and even a common person have studied its implications on society and the human condition for centuries. Each person has their own definition of what art is, what it means, and how it's created. My view is simple. Art is a way to snapshot a piece of the landscape that is humanity and make it interesting. Photography, for me, captures that perfectly. It is a visceral projection of my feelings about the world, about life, and about human connection. My name is Alex Burris. I'm a freelance photographer. I've shot weddings, editorial style shoots, and conceptual portraits. I've lived in the Richmond, Virginia area for most of my life, but I feel that my work has the ability to connect with people no matter where they end up. Let's make art together. Hi, I'm Drew, the guy from those clips you just saw, and if you enjoyed that, you can catch much, much more on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the8bitcasual. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash the8bitcasual1. I can't wait to see you there. Come hang out. We'll have some fun. Stay safe, stay friendly, and as always, keep it casual. The most nasty, dark and evil, disgraceful, dirty, detrimental, drugged up, genius, super smart. It looks like they'd be on crack. Influenced by LSD. It's just a train wreck. How, how like detrimental it is to your brain. The high is just so intense. It does not sound healthy. That seems crazy. I don't know. I really don't know what's going on. that commercial break we have our fabulous next segment we like to call the real advice where g is going to be giving us some relationship advice from you the viewers let's get ready for the real advice Relation, shit, 
into the real advice. All right, little segment done by he, him, I. All right, so let's get it going, all right? These questions are coming from you, the viewers. And if y'all have any other questions, put them at the end of this video in the comment section, all right? Because I want, I want to give you the advice, all right? Because <laughs> you say so myself, I'm pretty good at it. So um, who has the first question on for me? I do, sir. <clears throat> Our first uh, fan sent in question was, yes. Sir G, how do I handle big personalities in a relationship? Like Scorpios. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me rephrase. As a Virgo yourself, how does one handle big personalities? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's very true because um, Virgos tend to have big personalities. I know I have one of the yeah, big... Yeah, baby. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hello. But, um, um, it's, that's very difficult because my last relationship kind of... Sorry, I was talking too much. No, I'm going to say I didn't start it. Kind of ended because of all those big personalities. You know what I'm saying? Um, I always had to be right. She always had to be right. I always had to had last word. She always had to have last word. Uh, like, you know, something like that is very difficult to, to balance. So that being said, you have to be willing to give a little bit. Give and take. It's all about give and take. The relationship can be um, 50, 50, 75, 25, 25, 70, that's the same thing. It, you have to literally be at it 100%, 100% from everybody, all right? And you have to give and take. Instead of being right all the time, how about you, you know, it's okay. You know, just set back because for real, for real, let me give y'all some, some real tea, all right? If you are truly right, time will tell. All right. Dang. So that's what I that's what I like to do. And that's what I did in the last relationship. I'm like, okay, I don't gotta be right right now. <laughs> but in a couple of weeks, when you figure out that I wasn't right, you'll understand, you know. So balancing big um big what was it? Personalities. Personalities. Personalities is yeah, literally a juggling act. You just have to make sure you're able to give and take a little bit and to and I say this all in the same breath, to humble yourself a little bit. You don't always have to be the bigger personality in the relationship. And um, to just talk about myself again, just to give you a little bit of that, I, I, I like to say that I try to do very well in that because, yeah, I'm a big personality on here or something like that. But in a relationship, I, I tend to be completely different, which I think is good. Um, I love to be able to hear you, listen to you, and be able to have that in return. So being able to give what you want to receive. Does that make sense? Did I did I answer the question, do y'all think? Yeah. I well say said. yes. Well said. Well, shoot, I have the second question coming from Instagram. Make sure to check out our Instagram, by the way. Oh, yeah. But, uh, okay. okay with the color. All right. So the question is, uh, why do I keep getting into these daggone relationships? <laughs> I don't know who you are, so thus I really don't have an answer for you. But I hope <laughs> that you aren't getting in the relationship simply because you are lonely or simply because you want to be loved. Because if that's the case, in my um, humble opinion, then you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Before getting into a relationship, you need to make sure that you are one with yourself. Make sure that you are important in your life, all right? Don't get in that thing a hot, a hot mess, sorry. <laughs> Don't get in that thing as a hot mess, all right? Make sure that you are loving yourself and working on yourself first, all right? I think that's very important. Get into the relationship knowing that you're already doing some self-care things for yourself. Love yourself because if you... To quote, who is it? <laughs> Paul, actually. Aristotle. Yeah, Aristotle. To quote uh, Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, if you can't love yourself, <laughs> how are you going to love somebody else? You know? So it starts with yourself because once you love yourself, you can give your all to somebody else. Pretty so much took the words you, right out of my mouth. Did I? That's what I'm talking about. So before 
you get into that relationship? Like, why why do you keep getting into it? I don't know, but it sounds like <laughs> it's not such a good outcome. <laughs> so make sure you're really questioning yourself first. Why do I want a relationship? Why do I want to get into it? What are your goals for the future? Is it that I want I want to marry and get my all? Or is it you're very religious and you want to be able to find that soul tie to become one within Christ? You know what I'm saying? Like, what what is your overall goal? I ain't going to start preaching, but that's all I got to say. <laughs> next. <laughs> well, this next one is from Snippity Snapchat. Okay. Is it healthy for someone to look for their next relationship while they're married but separated? Mm, absolutely not. And let me tell you why. If you are separated and not divorced, then why are you separated? You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you just get divorced? Because if, to me, people say, I want, I want to separate. You just need a little time to kind of figure out things separately. I guess that's hence separate, <laughs> separated. But I assume that you're taking that time to work on the relationship between you two. So if you are separated, it's not going to do you any good to look for other people. You know what I'm saying? Just leave. But also, some people get separated for the kids. You know what I mean? We're just going to get separated. We're not going to be divorced. Oh, or they get separated for financial situations too. So it's all it's all a little different. Well, what kind of fans we got? Come, thank you, fans. Like we got we got some uh, like all 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 ages and stuff. I like that. Um, and me being how young I am, I haven't been in that um, predicament yet. It's like how credible is my um, opinion. But mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that if you separate, then you want to work on it. You know what I'm saying? If you want to find somebody else, go on divorce, leave, because that's not healthy for you. And it's not healthy for your partner. You have to be fair to you and your partner. And don't string that person along if you know that I just need, I need to separate from her. I want all the, I want my cake and to eat it too with her. However, I need to find somebody else. <laughs> mm. I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah. But also, you know, in the state of Virginia, I'll say you have to be separated for like a year before you get divorced. So if you do yeah. that, that's okay. That's okay though. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you for saying that. I forgot all about that. Now for states like us, then that's okay. Yeah, go on, look for you, little somebody on the, well, it's not even on the side at that point. Go ahead and look for somebody because divorce is the next step. But just make sure that y'all have that um, agreement that that is it and that y'all aren't working on anything because it ain't going to do no good that nine months into the relationship, I mean, ooh, sorry, into the separation, y'all are, you know, you finally found you somebody else. Your other person is still like, Oh, I really, I really want them back. Uh, hey, yeah, um, I want you back. And then you're, then you see their face, and then you like, oh, dang, I kind of like you too. Then you done strained along this other person for nine months, and now you're gonna have like it's just that just becomes a trick feed situation. So just make sure y'all have that agreement first of what it is that separation is gonna mean. You know what I mean? Are we separate? Separate? Are we done? Done? Or and divorce is next or are some feelings going to change which is hard to it's hard to mitigate that like how are you supposed to know what god has also, for you you know what I mean? but, yeah i'll say well i'll say last thing for legal purposes this is just advice you don't gotta do this so if he messes up or if you mess up because you you know you interpreted something wrong that's your fault this yeah that's just legal you know yeah, that ain't on, on my point. That, uh, that yeah, ain't, yeah, they ain't on my I, point. Yeah. <laughs> However, <laughs> this is some good advice, all right? Yeah, it, was, it was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was pretty good. For real? Wait, do y'all think that for real? Yeah, that was good advice, man. Thank you. And that's a little bit of the real advice. Okay. Okay. Everybody. I'm trying not, I, I'm trying not to stroke your ego too much, but I guess it was. <laughs> I mean, done. All right, but yeah, I appreciate that. So yeah. Oh, how did I win this game? Whew. Hi, I'm Drew, the guy from those clips you just saw. 
And if you enjoyed that, you can catch much, much more on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the8bitcasual. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash the8bitcasual1. I can't wait to see you there. Come hang out. We'll have some fun. Stay safe. Stay friendly. And as always, keep it casual. The most nasty, dark and evil, disgraceful, dirty, detrimental, drugged up, genius, super smart. It looks like they'd be on crack. Influenced by LSD. It's just a train wreck. How, how like detrimental it is to your brain. The high is just so intense. It does not sound healthy. That seems crazy. I don't know. I really don't know what's going on. What is art? Philosophers, musicians, scientists, and even a common person have studied its implications on society and the human condition for centuries. Each person has their own definition of what art is, what it means, and how it's created. My view is simple. Art is a way to snapshot a piece of the landscape that is humanity and make it interesting. Photography, for me, captures that perfectly. It is a visceral projection of my feelings about the world, about life, and about human connection. My name is Alex Burris. I'm a freelance photographer. I've shot weddings, editorial style shoots, and conceptual portraits. I've lived in the Richmond, Virginia area for most of my life, but I feel that my work has the ability to connect with people no matter where they end up. Let's make art together. like a freaking cherry tomato over here <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh y'all okay okay all right and we are back i hope you enjoyed that last segment um it's near near to my heart and i hope i helped some of you guys and like i said if you want to ask me some questions go ahead and maybe we all give a give our um inputs so up next we have our very very first guest ever and this is like super special to me and it's so much because i'm such a huge fan of this person but anyway we're going to keep going he is a beast in the podcast world and if i'm not mistaken the music industry too he has two podcasts called frat chat and shock therapy podcast and he is also an amazing rapper so let's give this man a nice warm welcome to my point everybody welcome carson mcgregor Hello, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you guys? I'm doing good. So um, for all the viewers, this is actually my first time really meeting Carson in person. I've heard his podcast for so many weeks and months now at this point. That I'm like, I know Carson. We're best friends. However, we don't know each other from um, Diddly Squat. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm not really that interesting. Uh, the connection I have, <laughs> the connection I have here is that Mikey and I, we do a podcast together uh, called Frat Chat, where we uh, discuss random topics as they come up. But, you know, the most interesting thing really about that is that we happen to be actual fraternity brothers. Um, yeah. Disgraced, we're both dropouts, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not a disgrace at all. So when you were in college, what were you on? What were you studying? Uh, I was studying communications. Mm -hmm. and, is, uh... and if I'm not mistaken, from what I heard from one of your last podcasts, I think on shock therapy is that you're actually about to, what's the shock therapy? Sorry, I'm getting the, it's bleeding together, but you're trying to go back to school. You're taking some classes now. And you're trying to go back to school for um, cinematography. For, uh, video editing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to go back to film school uh, to try to become a video editor. I did a bunch of short films when I was in high school, and uh, I, I participated in a bunch of these high school film festivals where, you know, a bunch of kids with their crappy films all get together <laughs> and, uh, and act like we made some sort of art. But, um, 
but it was a lot of fun. And I, and it's something I, I always wanted to improve on and never really got the chance to. All right. So talk to me about Pratt Chat. Where did y'all get this idea for Pratt Chat? Maybe Mikey can also give us a little input of that, but it is hilarious if I do say so myself. Thank you. So Carson had always talked about wanting to do a podcast, but I think one day we just said, let's do it. After he started his podcast, about a week after he started it, and we mm -hmm. just started our own, or we started that one together. And, you know, it's all unscripted. Sometimes we have talking points, but I think the best part about it is just, just our unfiltered minds just going at it all the time. And we're best friends too. So like we have this connection and bond that's just, you know, it's, it's deeper than some, you know? Yeah. yeah, there's a uh, there's an element that I think people enjoy seeing when it comes to their entertainment, because most entertainment for years has been uh, casted members of a, uh, of a of a cast getting together and making something. And then when it's genuine connection between people, it, it comes across in a totally different way. It feels way more real. Yeah, I Oh, what were you saying, Mikey? On top of Carson going back to, uh, let me just bring it back to the cinematography. We have some music videos that he has done. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. For one song called For You, the other song called Frat House, both on YouTube. <laughs> I think Carson likes to sell himself short, but um, he's a very, very good video editor. And uh, when, he's, when he's got a camera in his hand, he, he just knows what he's doing. Nice. See, I like that I hear that because... Um, I like to do a little music myself and I've been wanting to do a music video for so long, but I can't find anyone, you know, that will commit or that I can just trust to be like, yes, find, create this vision with me, you know? So maybe, right. maybe we can collab if that's, <laughs> don't want to put you on the spot, think about it, but. <laughs> As for Frank, no, that, that, um, that's a good time to that's a good time to ask when it's like live and it's like damn I, I, yeah now we all know why g asked carson to come on the show this is all a plot <laughs> oh a lot. No, that is not it oh my goodness well, let me ask Frank you about yourself for five minutes and then i'll tell you what i really want from you is uh <laughs> some free music videos <laughs> hey i said nothing about free <laughs> well, I mean, I will say, Carson, just from listening to you, just for the little bit that I have, you have an awesome voice yeah. coming across in the microphone. It's so, like, I don't, I don't want to say gravelly, but it's got this really, like, like I, I, it's hard to put my finger on it, but it's kind of grungy, but also really a little soothing. So, like, you, I, I that. imagine, like, that really translates good over podcasts and things. And, you know, you could probably try, like, voice acting and stuff, too. You know, there. when I was at the Lion King on Broadway with my family, okay. I, I was just sitting there talking to my sister and this dude in the uh, row in front of us turns around and he says, you know, you have a great radio voice. And like, that is the only compliment I've ever received that like almost ever? made me cry <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> that was a strange, that was like a stranger. He didn't have to say all that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of... Uh, already is Broadway on top of that, oh, I probably would have cried myself. Carson, my mom thinks your voice is sexy. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that before. And, uh, and you know, if, if she wasn't a married woman, you know. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. Um, Dad needs to watch out. All right. <laughs> Jack, what were you going to say? It's kind of Howard Sterny, I think. Mm. His Ooh. voice. Also, hell of a jawline. Someone's got to put it out there. Oh, thank you. Let's, let's, let's end let me the, get the portrait. Video, so. Woo! Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I don't think the video was pinned at that point. What What did you do? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Razor blade. So we just announced now that next week we'll have a new co-host, Carson McGregor. <laughs> Jack Harmon has been replaced. I've got some fabric that needs cutting. Can I come over to your house real quick? <laughs> so tell me, have people always commented on your jawline? Like, what? What? Give us that story. Like, uh, that you know, it's funny. I was like way, way less. Like Mikey can speak to this for sure. Uh, 
I was not good looking for a very long time. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I was don't get ahead busted. of yourself. Okay? We just said you have a good jawline. Nobody said anything about good looking. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Take it easy. Carson. No, no, no. Claim it. Claim it, Carson. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got it. <laughs> No, I was like, I was like, not like, at, I was really uh, kind of dusty when I was uh, in high school. I just, I dressed like su super, just the same every day. I had this weird idea that like this weird cartoon character energy where I just wore the same exact clothes all the time. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I, I tried rocking this like little goatee for a while. I thought that was cool. And uh, I dyed my hair blonde because I thought that was cool. And just none of it worked. And it, it all looked so bad. I said it off camera. And I said, I, was, I would say it in front of him and not, I'll say it in front of him or not in front of him. I said, Carson looked goofier like freshman year. Like Carson's sexy as heck now. And like, you know, you really grew into yourself. I think everyone grows into themselves for to an extent. But like, like just seeing you, knowing you from that point to this point, like sheesh, you know? Yeah, you were the same way. You were the same way. Oh, what? What? What is happening? Oh. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I that the, uh, oh, are you showing us our, your jawline now? What was that, Mikey? I, I I'll said. play the video for you. All right. I never even had a jawline. Is this even a jaw? Yeah, okay, I'm not going to be humble. It's there, I think. <laughs> so everybody in the comment section, tell us whose jawline um, you appreciate the most. No, not me. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. But... This isn't about any of us. It's all about you, Carson. So tell us, what do you have next? Come, like, what's, what can we expect next from Carson McGregor? Uh, just a lot more of the, um, of the podcast, the Shock Therapy podcast, Frat Chat, and on the YouTube channel, RVA Podcast Collective, that we released all this stuff on, uh, I'm going to start making more shorter type content uh, that's a little bit easier to consume. All our podcasts are like 30 minutes to an hour. So uh, I understand why people don't want to uh, commit that much time. But I, I'm super into hip hop. I'm just like a huge hip hop nerd. So I wanted to start hey. making videos that were like uh, centric around hip hop in some way. Nice. Very nice. Cool. All right. Well, Carson, I think we're just about out of time. But I truly do appreciate you taking the time out because y'all don't know this but Carson had to like be with us throughout this whole show <laughs> but not on camera so that's a long time all right because these videos are supposed to be 30 minutes but they're averaging 30 to 40 now all right so Carson <laughs> thank you so much for having the time to come out today because truly I am such a fan of your work <laughs> That means a lot, man. That really means a lot. And thank you guys so much for having me. Like, this, this was really fun. Of course, of course. And I'll probably definitely reach out to you so I can get some of your, um, what is it, your Instagram handles and all of that to yeah. put on the site, all right? All right, sure thing. Well, good. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. All right, see you guys. Thanks, Peace. Carson. Thank you. Peace, buddy. All right. Carson is amazing, um, just as I imagined by listening to all those podcasts, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Quite the individual. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Just a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> right. Well, guys, that is all the time we have for today. Am I right? Like, we need to go. We need to do things. We have things to do, yeah, for the rest of the evening. With masks on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Properly. 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 Yeah, so good good wrap of episode four. So next week, tune in October 1st. Am I right? Is it is it going to be October already? Spooky season. Oh, yeah. Ooh, okay. Get your hoodie hot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we were season. Oh, my God. Yeah. In the uh, season. Look, look at hey. us. Look, we say the Virgo that. rain is over. <laughs> oh, that, means, that means Scorpio season is coming up soon then. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> ahead of ourselves. Wow. So we might be able to celebrate all of our birthdays on this show this year. Oh. Look at us. Fall so, game. Is trick or treating yeah. going to be a Corona fest? Oh boy. Oh yeah. We'll talk about it next week. Yeah. <laughs> tune <in. laughs> so tune in October first, next Thursday at six p.m. for another wonderful, wonderful, wonderful episode of My Point. All right. My name is Gary G. Reese, and it has been a pleasure. See you real soon.
Bye. Carson, 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 Carson,